Hello? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, let me just turn up a little bit. I'm outside. Uh, beautiful day. And a little bit of street noise in the background. So I apologize if it's a little bit noisy. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't hear the street noise. Um, it's completely fine. Perfect. That's nice. Okay, um, so uh, I, I'm recording this and I'm probably going to be putting this on YouTube. So I'm going to just kind of like okay. say that out. Like if there's anything you want me to cut, totally down to cut it. Um, so just like for reference of like people possibly watching, can I read the thing that I sent you? Yeah, of course. Okay, let's do this. Okay. Because I, I feel like, um, like I feel like as I continue to do like the shadow work, I, I feel like as I continue to do the shadow work, like um, it, it's, it's allowing me to so easily like recognize people's intentions and it's allowing me so easily to see the sort of like various games that are like going on within in a, a game A context. And so um, mm. it's almost like as if I can almost like read minds, like, like literally, right? Because because also I'm like super empathic, right? So I, I'm, I can feel their emotions and I can recognize game. So like I know their intentions. I know like what like possible insecurities that they're probably like compensating for and that, that kind of stuff, right? Um, so I'm just going to get started with this uh, essay. I found the solution to my nihilism. Uh, sorry. I found the solution to the nihilism I have felt since a young child. The solution is daring to have faith in love. Daring to have faith that there exists a pure form of love that transcends the transactional relationships and validation games born out of our ego defenses. The armored ego and its habitual defensive posture does not dare believe in such a pure love. It does not dare leave itself vulnerable enough to truly open to the love of another without holding back. To do so would be to risk death from its perspective. And so the armored ego in its neuroticism, paranoia, and desperate need for control only feels safe receiving and giving love transactionally and will seek to control the objects of its love. Within all of us, there is a place that deeply yearns to be seen and loved for who we are. But this place is so vulnerable, so gentle, so easily hurt, and wants to be loved so sincerely, so desperately, that no one can bear revealing this place to one another. So we hide ourselves, wear our social masks, and settle for these unfulfilling social games we all play to meet our deep yearning for love. But to be loved only for our surfaces is meaningless, for our deepest loneliness is that we are not seen or loved for who we authentically are at our core. Much of the early trauma I have experienced stemmed from the various abuses I suffered from within these social games. And so in my suffering, I turned away from my own yearning for love, my own innate sensitivity, and developed a compensatory character armor, numb and hardened enough to withstand the abuses of my childhood and the realities of my then current social environment. But as much as this need to be loved is suppressed, it is always in the background, within every social game, under every social mask, no matter how vicious, fraudulent, or transactional. This need, through the veil, through the armor of our ego defenses, expresses itself from within the social game as the constant search for external validation. This is why teenagers who routinely emotionally, abu emotionally abuse one another still desperately seek validation from one another. It is why misogynistic young men who have no respect for women still desperately seek out female validation. It is why even those who critique the oppressive nature of civilization and its rigid standards still seek to live up to those rigid standards. And this need to be loved, our desire to find belonging amongst one another, it points to something else, something fundamental. One does not seek love or belonging from those that one does not value. On some level, deep down, beneath the defenses the ego has built to protect the heart, one only seeks love and belonging from the ones who are beloved. So under all the pretenses and social games, underneath our chasing of status and external validation, underneath our masks, our personas, there is a deeper love that we all share. A deeper love that transcends our pettiness and our squabbling. A deeper love that connects us to each other, unites us, and makes it possible for us to cooperate and form groups. A deeper love that emanates from a place so vulnerable and gentle, so soft and kind, and so unfit for this cruel transactional world that we do not dare reveal it to one another or even to ourselves. To allow this love in its full expression is to come in contact with meaningfulness. It is to realize our interconnectedness with our surrounding env environment, with our community, and the human family at large. 
It is to realize our responsibilities for contribution to the greater whole and through acceptance of this responsibility, our purpose and our higher calling. But it is also to bear the suffering and weight of a broken world, a world inundated by insincerity and exploitation, such as the cost of integrity. And it, is, and it is this gentle, soft, vulnerable love that leaves us so unprotected in the face of each other's harsh judgments. It is this love that connects us with our need to belong and by extension, our feelings of shame and our fear of rejection. It is this love that leaves us so controllable and so manipulable in a society that gives love and acceptance so conditionally. Because deep down, despite any surface appearances to the contrary, we are all seeking love the only ways we know how. The nihilism I inhabited was, was a cage, a cage my mind had constructed to trap, control, and suppress this deep yearning for love. Because this yearning had been so painful, because this yearning had been unfulfilled for so long, because this yearning leaves me so vulnerable, so helpless, and because this yearning had been exploited, made me a prey to be used and discarded. In my deal with the devil, I cast this part of me into the shadows, into the cage, into the darkness, and in place of my yearning for love existed a fiery rage, a seething hatred, and a deep, empty hollowness. It's ironic, the extent of the hatred, the disconnection, the nihilism I felt was in direct proportion to the degree to which my suppressed vulnerable parts loved the world, its people, and wanted that love to be reciprocated. The nihilism as an ego defense mechanism was a precise counter reaction to the purity of the innocent love that existed at my core. And the strength of my resistance to this love was in direct proportion to the softness of my vulnerability for what is evil but wounded innocence. It is precisely in our moments of deepest suffering where it is so tempting to trade in our innocence to escape the pain of our broken hearts to let our bitterness and hurt disfigure us change us into something else something other than who we are meant to be we do not get to choose whether or not we experience traumas we all will we do we do not get to choose whether these traumas will cause us pain we will hurt but we do get to choose how this affects us it is between the moment we experience pain and the moment we interpret that pain, imbuing it with meaning, where there is a moment in time, a bifurcation point, a space. It is within this space where we are free, free to choose who we are, who we will become, and free to choose our destinies. And therein lies the challenge. Can you stay open? Can you continue to believe in love? Can you stay true to your faith? Can you grasp the bigger picture? Can you find the courage to take your stand in your own original innocence, amidst the suffering, the turmoil, the abuse? Can you weather the storms of life without faltering? Can you rise above your suffering, pain, and bitterness? bitterness? Can you choose love in spite of it all? And not for anyone else, but simply because that is who we are, who we choose to be. That's it. Oh, okay. The, the connection's off, huh? Yeah, the connection became unstable. Okay. Um, what you just did was perfect. I didn't have any problems. I think it's my fault, not yours. Okay, got it. Um, I may... I'm using my phone. Let me... Um, I'm going to go into this coffee shop. I thought being outside and being a little bit more private would be better. Okay. But I didn't expect my phone to have such a connection. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's play, let's, let's play with where we are right now. If we have one more real freeze, I'll, I'll make that move. Okay, got it. Okay, fair enough. Which, by the way, we can take as a, um, a very, very mital, minor buffeting um, at the level of that egoic construct. Uh, what, what do you mean? Um, like the mild just... So the story that you told, which, by the way, I agree with. Okay. So it's a very simple guess. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that you, I think you connected quite deeply, mm -hmm. and I think you expressed it quite beautifully. So okay. as a... Uh, as sort of an epistle, I think that was wonderful. Okay. Um, and Thank you. While we're talking right now. Um, so what we can say is that there's a the the origin. Uh, and here I'm, I'm largely working with uh, psychology, and okay. in some sense even metapsych. Okay. Um, the the origin of the of the aspect of self that ultimately is the one that you were describing. The devil, yeah. Okay, sure. Yeah. yeah. So there's essentially two layers before it gets to the place that you described. Okay. These are actually healthy, useful layers. <laughs> okay, interesting. Yes, <laughs> right? so, Yes. okay. Um, the first layer is the one that brings us into relationship with an uncertain world. Okay. And, and you see this very often among young children, like in the 
two years old, the sort of four or five years old range. Uh-huh. Right? This is where there's a, a, a need to develop a competency. And remember, during that time frame, yeah. you live in a magical world. So in some sense, everything is personed as okay. a two-year-old. Okay. Um, and so your, your will, your want, your desire, your intent mm-hmm. is supported and frustrated by the simple fact of the environment that you're in. Okay, got it. For example, in this moment, we want to have a, in a good network connection mm-hmm. that gives us an uninterrupted conversation. Yes. And if reality does not comport with our preferences, mm-hmm. um, we might feel frustrated. And okay. that an aspect of ourselves will be activated to mm-hmm. try to solve that problem. As you have a, yes. A yes, 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 yes. Aspect, right? yes, 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 yes. I and there's saying. a whole like, universe of conversation about how to be in a relationship with that. Yeah. But I would say that, um, you know, the, both the, pardon me, yeah, it's, it's um, a little unstable right now, but it's kind of okay. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, some, there's some stories that come from, say, uh, like Taoism. Okay. And some stories that from Buddhism mm-hmm. that in many ways are developed from my point of view to to temper a certain tyranny of the problem-solving aspect of ourselves. Okay, I see. All right. The, the, the notion of Wu Wei or okay. the notion of non-attachment uh-huh. is, in, in many ways, from my point of view, okay. an antidote to what happens when that aspect of ourselves... Wow. Today's like... Uh, when that aspect of ourselves tries to present itself as, in some sense, the whole of ourselves. Okay, I see. Or yes. the way I think of it is it usurps authority. It, it, it puts on yes. itself on the crown. Yes, 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 yes. Um, ah, yes. Uh, Ian McGilchrist, the master and his emissary, right? That dynamic. Yes, that makes sense, yes. <clears throat> and, then, sense. and then developmentally, mm-hmm. as we sort of move from you know, two to four and begin moving five, six, seven, mm-hmm. we notice that we're, in fact, a social form. We're yes. interacting with other humans. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and as you say, uh, there's just, and I don't know, if you have kids, you'll see this in real time. It's very clear. Okay. Uh, okay. We, we actually play with other humans in the same way that we play with a tree or uh, oh, a, a fountain. Okay. They're, they're objects mm-hmm. that have a relationship to our ability to move them. But we notice that the, the, we can move them and they can move us in a very different fashion. Okay, yes. Those are the yes. story. Yes. Right? Facial expressions, uh-huh. words, words. Like I, I can say words to the rock in front of me as much as I want. The uh-huh. rock, rock will not be moved. Yes. But if I tell mom that I hate her, something will happen. Yes. And I yes, feel yes, like yes. a control. Yeah. Okay, got it. And got then, it. of course, you finally you move into that period of adolescence where this position of um, the, the exit from childhood to adolescence, the, the, the deepness, the, uh, the memory of that connection to this source of love, okay. the deepness of that connection the mm-hmm. whole that is ambient in childhood okay the magic yeah it, it long last begins to fade and you're now very much in a highly social milieu yes and a highly yes, mental yes, yes. and and yeah. this is where the things that you were describing begins to really settle in yes we, we forget we forget who we are we forget where we come from we yeah. forget the, the the world sacredness of the world uh-huh and we begin to actually believe that reality we are and the world is the constructs that we have developed to navigate the world. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and then that's how you, um, that's how you like, like, and I notice I have this tendency, right? Because um, the way I experience what I call the devil, like, I, like I really experience it as like an entity in my mind. I really do because um, the, the, the devil within me uh, has a, a, a deep reservoir of wisdom. A deep reservoir of wisdom, like it, 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 it knows, um, like, like my heart, like my, my humanity, right? It, it knows people in a certain way. It knows people in a certain way, and it's also very accurate. But the devil knows people in a different way, and it's also very accurate. And and it, it yes, and it's it, it reduces people to um, 
ego configurations. It reduces people to like a series of mental habits and self-deceptions and uh, ego defense mechanisms. And it, it, it reduces them almost like to an object, to an object. And it's, and it's like, it's because, it's because like, uh, and a lot of it comes from relational trauma. That's right, I realized it comes from relational trauma because like I'm willing to give a person uh, unconditional love, like unconditional love in the sense of like, I'm not going to try to take anything from you. I'm not going to try to uh, manipulate you or uh, abuse you to get you to do what I want in any way. I'm just here like as a good friend to support you, right? But then if I get, uh, if from that place of innocence, I become wounded, um, it actually teaches me to view the other person as like, like, a, like an obstacle, and like no longer a person, and it's coming from fear, and it's coming from a uh, hurt and fear, um, and so this is something I've been actually, I actually wrote some notes I wanted to touch on, but but I think I'm just gonna freestyle this. Um, so you you talk about this. This is really interesting. You talk about like uh, originally there being a community, being community, and society uh, takes what's real in community and mediates the relationship between members of community through some uh, top-down social artifact, let's call it like a, like a game, like a social game. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, and, and in the same way, love and validation is this, is, it has that same dynamic. Love is like what is mm -hmm. fundamental. It is like community. It is like self. Whereas uh, validation is like uh, game A. It, 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 it's, it's, the, it's the layer that is... Um, imposed on top of what's real, like what is actually meaningful. Um, and it uh, simulates and fabricates it, as you said, right? Uh, as you said before. Yep. And, uh, and in, in the same way, like a person's true self um, is supported by love, right? Like within a loving household, a person's true self is like able to flourish. Um, uh, when, uh, the, the, when, when, they're, when they're not given love, um, and they, they're taught that the, that the love that is given to them is transactional, um, they stop uh, looking for love and they start looking for validation. And validation mm. teaches them to see themselves as an object to perform within a shared game, and it turns them into a, a machine. It makes them mechanical. It makes them mechanical. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting. Like I, it's, <laughs> This is really interesting, right? Like, like the way I'm talking to you, like I can't talk like this for a lot of people, right? Like, and, and, and but, 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 okay, this is, this is fascinating. Salespeople and marketers, ooh, salespeople and marketers, they know exactly what I'm talking about. When I talk about this kind of stuff, they know exactly what I'm talking about. They have every idea of what I'm talking about because, because, and, and it's, it's because a salespeople and marketers tend to attract narcissists. It's a profession that tends mm. to attract narcissists who are, uh, good at this ego game and good at procuring validation from others. And so they create a, uh, in, the, in the literature, what they call an idealized false self, right? In the narcissism literature, it is similar to your conception yeah. of what you call identity. It, it is identity, actually. It's, yeah. it's like when I started studying narcissism, so I had a conversation with, um, with a, I'm not sure if I can call her a friend, but someone I know. And, um, I was talking about how it just seems like within the big city, like narcissism is kind of the norm on some level. Because even if someone's not like clinically yeah. diagnosed with narcissism, the kinds of ego games and ego defense mechanisms and posturing, it's all reminiscent of like narcissistic tendencies. And so it's a spectrum, like, like anything. And, and almost everyone to compete within civilization needs an idealized false self, right? And so um, the degree to which you draw your sense of self-worth from validation is the degree to which uh, you're likely to be a narcissist who, a, a narcissist, uh, they repress their own um, true self, let's say. They actually repress it. It's actually, and, and that's the deal with the devil. It's like turning away from your true self in order to create an idealized false self that, then, that could then compete within uh, the game of mimetic rivalry, let's just say. Yeah, within the game of mimetic rivalry. And so uh, that, that, that idealized false self is the devil. 
That, that is the devil. That is the devil. That is the devil. And the deal with the devil is when we were abandoned, we don't feel like we're uh, deserving of love as we are. We take the deal to play the transactional game so that we can earn love from the world. And uh, I, I noticed because narcissists have attachment trauma, they're like afraid of like true love. They're afraid of like actually coming into authentic relation with another. And so like... Uh, there's always sort of like manipulative games when you're in relation with them. But, but everyone has that to some degree because almost everyone has that to some degree when you're in the big city because everyone to some degree has that kind of relational trauma because the culture cannot hold people in love. The culture can only play transactional games and have people accrue validation and develop idealized false self. That, that's what the culture is built around. And so... Uh, that's game. That's game A, right? Like from from a psychological perspective, this is game A, and game B is actually what like what I'm going to call the kingdom of God. What I'm going to call the kingdom of God, and and, and game game uh, game B is um, is being able to come in relation with self uh, such that you do not need to. Uh, draw on the outside for external validation to feed your sense of self. And from that place, from being an authentic self, you are now more immune to validation games. Um, and now you can, uh, uh, you will attract healthy functional relationships that are authentic and free of these sorts of manipulations. And, and it's, it's a spectrum because in so, on some level, like, like I feel like game A and game B are interpenetrating because even within the most severe game A context, there is a spark of like an abandoned child looking for love. There's a spark of that authenticity. And within game B context, like yes, you can be very authentic, but there's still subtle status hierarchies and subtle like, like looking for validation from the people who are popular. It's, it's, just, it's just like, it's a, it's a spectrum. The degree to which you can stay centered in self is the degree to which you can uh, create the kingdom of God around you with like-minded people. Okay, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I was. I was kind of on a roll before. I, I, I had some other things I was going into, but let's just <laughs> leave it at that. If you have any like responses, yeah. No, I mean, I'm laughing because I noticed that um... What I would say is that my, I have a sense that there's some things that you need to you need to express. Like there's a there's a penseness. That there's a you know okay. And I'm you know I'm a, I'm happy to be available because what you're saying is very good. I'm yes. glad that it's being said. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I felt this, a sadness when you mentioned that you can't have these conversations more broadly. You know I, uh, I, I can't. You know I can't. Yeah. And I, I think it would be good if you could. So let's let's figure out a way. Let's bring more of, a, of the kingdom of, of God on, into onto earth so you can. Yes. 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 Um, and you know, my, as I recognize where we are, like mm -hmm. great, then I will I will be here, in some sense, to, to listen and also also to create a. a, a, a you're recording this, right? And you're planning yes. on putting it on YouTube, yes. so yes. there will also be something going on there. Mm -hmm. Let me. Um, one thing I wanted to bring out, and I'm sure you you've already got this, but there's yeah. a there's three or four different levels of the devil. As you okay. describe it, I, 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 by the way, you should refer to it as the adversary because okay. I don't even want to give the name. Okay. Uh, okay. Got it. The one is this, this, this interior aspect that is, is in you. And what I would say in particular, remember I, I created this layers of like, how do you solve problems? How do you navigate social environments? And then this, this place where you kind of get lost in your own construct. Okay. <clears throat> and, and what I would say is that the, the devil precisely is playing with a very specific trade-off. Okay. And you also talked about in terms of relations between love and validation. Mm -hmm. It's always, that's the bargain. Right? Yes, that, that's, I, that is. I, I yes. Will, right, I'll trade you a simulation, yeah. but one that you can control, mm -hmm. right? One that has a certain degree of predictability. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, yes. And, you, and you, you kind of don't realize that you lost the whole thing. Oh. Uh, you'll trade me the whole thing and I'll give you back something, which is maybe even 99% of the whole thing, okay. but a lot more controllable. Okay. A lot less uncertain in certain ways. Oh. And you don't notice that I, that I took away, but what you don't realize is that something that is not the whole thing is in fact 
infinitely away from the whole thing. Yes. That's the problem. Yes, right? the, that, that's that the problem. is. We take, if, or, or to put it a very, a very concrete way, if the, the, even a very large amount of the finite is 0% of the infinite. Yes, yes. So that's the, the devil's yes. trick is, is to trick you into making that trade oh, of, God. I will in fact give you the whole world as long as you give me the infinite. Okay. A little bit. Okay. So that's one level. Beautiful. Now the level, the level above that, and uh -huh. we talked about this in sort of the distinction between what I call community, what I call society. Okay. Or we may is this thing running in people mm -hmm. creates a uh, a niche or an opportunity or a conspiracy to change things in the in the in the transpersonal or in the in the more than individual realm. Okay. And so you start getting contexts, like let's say school. Okay. Work. Uh huh. Uh, certainly war, right? Yes, yes, yes. Where, where the context makes it very difficult to not make that trade. Right? Okay. What, the, what it wants to do is wants to put you in a place where the ability to hold in your authentic self uh -huh. has more and more pressure. And yeah. the the utility yeah. or the obviousness of making that trade yeah. that's more and more compelling, yeah. even to the point of being unconsciously just natural. Right? Yes. So, and that's a really nice feedback loop yes. right? between the, yes. the context you find yourself in and the, 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 and the version of self that you're running. You said this with like marketers and, and uh, narcissism. Yeah, marketers you know, and salespeople are narcissism. Yeah. Operating in the market, mm -hmm. being a narcissist, makes you a more effective marketer in the market. Yes. And if your life is mediated by the market, mm -hmm. you have to become a narcissist to be effective at all, right? So they co-produce each other. Yes, 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 yes. Now there's a third level up. Okay. Now the third level is something like the fact that this kind of dynamic exists in the world at all, uh -huh. right? Now we're talking about the, the, the more, hmm, how do I say this right? This is almost like the more eternal, like the platonic form of okay. the adversary. Okay. Or the the theological essence of that. Right. So we could talk so I'm talking about like capital T, capital D. Okay. It's the fact that there is a an omnipresent uh, as you said, in the context of, of game B, mm -hmm. or in the context of the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. Um, the devil is always available. It's always there. Yeah. Right? Even the Garden of Eden, there's yes. always the serpent, and there's always a, a possibility of falling into sin, right? Coming yes. out of continuity of contact with yes. the infinite. Yes. And then, and then, of course, that, that creates a possible downward spiral. It's not wow. inevitable there will be a downward spiral, okay. but the possibility of the downward spiral is always available. Right? So that's at that third level. Okay. Um, and, and then there's a fourth level, but the fourth level now we get past the ability to articulate. Uh -huh. Now we're living in the realm of mystery. Okay. And the mystery is the mystery of why that's the case. Okay. Why is it that the nature of reality is one well where the possibility of sin is is, trend, is omnipresent? Okay. Where the, this sort of abstract or the transcendent catalyst, the platonic form of the adversary is present. That's happening at the fourth level. And that's one where, you know, the, the mind, language, is not adequate to okay. participate in that only to notice that that's a thing <clears throat> and in some sense to proceed accordingly i would say oh god you know it's it's like uh it's about integrity it's about integrity and it's like like i, I was caught up in a situation where like i was 95 percent in i had 95 percent integrity and the last five percent is like when i got tricked by like by the devil, like by, by my anger, by my pride, uh, desire for control. Um, and, and I was doing great and I was doing great, but that last 5% caught, cost me the entire thing. Yeah, for sure. Cost me the entire thing. And, um, and it made the situation prime to be manipulated by another devil. Yeah. And yeah. And it's like, it's like in a moment I was tricked and made the situation prime to be manipulated by another devil. Cause, um, but it's, it's like the, 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 the deal with the devil, because it's, it's like when you have, um, 
it's like when you've been touched by the devil, when you're touched, when you, when you, once you've been touched by the adversary, let's call it that. Once you've been touched by the adversary, um, you, you can see the adversary in others. You can see it in others and you, you can very see clearly their deal with the devil. You can see it very clearly before they even are able to see it. And then you're like, okay, like you just betrayed me. So like, fuck off. But then me doing that just escalates the situation into a downward spiral. <laughs> there you go. There and, you go. But and, when you, you think about something like the culture war, uh -huh. which you realize is that the devil is like, you know, like the arms dealer. The devil doesn't care what side of the culture war you're on. Yeah. The devil's very happy. Just there's a nice, good, rich, healthy, ubiquitous, increasingly intense mm -hmm. culture war. Okay. That's the that's what the devil's looking for. Yeah. And I think it's by the way, me, and this is something my personal experience is when you say this notion, if you can see the devil. Yeah. I mean, yeah, like very particularly, if you look in somebody's eyes very closely and watch, uh -huh. you can actually see the moment where their authentic self withdraws, and a hardening or a yes. deception enters. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I you like I look at pictures of myself in high school. I had those exact eyes. Mm. I had those eyes. I had those eyes. I look at pictures of myself in high school. I'm like, damn. <laughs> like it scares me. It scares me. And like the fact that I was just walking around like this, you know, like it's just. <laughs> and you know, it's it's like it's it it sucks, right? Because you know, I've been I've been doing so much therapy on myself. Like it's it's uh, it's insane. It's like takes up most of my time, like doing therapy on myself, actually, um, because I actually feel and, and actually talking to you, I can I can really say this. Um, like, yes, I want to like get back on my feet, you know, moving to Mexico soon and I'm um, going to really like ramp up YouTube videos and stuff like that. Um, I, 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 I plan to do all of this, but I'm, I'm kind of like putting it on hold because I, I need to work on this. Like I feel, I feel the incongruence in me. Like I feel the devil, the adversary, like trying to claw at my soul. I could feel it. I could yeah. feel it. <laughs> and it's like, I explain this to anyone else and people just think I'm lazy. And it's just, I can't, I can't, <laughs> I can't explain it to anyone. I can't explain it to anyone. Uh, I can't explain it to anyone. Um, mm. I can't explain it to anyone. And... So, so let me let me put a few more things in there. Yeah. Um, so, so one are the concepts of redemption and grace. Okay. Um, <sighs> well, let me just do those first. Okay. So, my sense of it, okay. certainly my experience of it, got it, it is that I. Okay. And I would propose you mm -hmm. and, and, and all humans, all finite humans, okay. uh, are not going to ever truly be capable of 100% integrity. Yeah. 100% of yeah. the time. I know. And so yeah. we are in need of redemption. Yeah. And we need to, uh, some relationship with something that can be, mm -hmm. in fact, intrinsically is, right? Intrinsically is. Okay. It, there's a big, big difference. Like we maybe have a... We're, we're like, when we say integrity, we're like a, um, <laughs> have you ever done that thing at a water park? We've uh -huh. got a bunch of people who are on, on inner tubes yeah. and you put your feet underneath somebody else's arms and you try to like go down the slide, uh -huh. like connected. Yeah. We're like that. Okay. Uh, so we, we can be like, you know, a chain of five people. Okay. But when you hit the rapids, it's going to break apart. Okay. And then, you know, if you're, uh, if you're lucky, you can come back together and okay. be in a chain. So that's like Got us it. coming out of integrity and coming back into it. Okay. Got it. Now we can imagine if something is intrinsically whole, its very nature is integrity, then it can't come out of integrity by its okay. very nature. Okay. So that's that kind of thing is the kind of thing that could provide us with with grace. And grace would be the the the, the reintegrity. It's actually literally okay. the constitutive force of a world uh -huh. that has that precisely is that which brings provides us with the ability to come back into integrity that we don't have ourselves because we don't we aren't in in intrinsically whole <clears throat> so okay. redemption and grace as right? so mm. i'm to bring those in and be mindful of that like so coming into your own per oh that was the second piece it just dropped in so your own personal journey is a journey of coming into increasing awareness of integrity but also an increasing humility okay uh, but, but, 
I'm going to be moving back and forth on this thing, and I will do my Got best. It. But if you try to hold it through indomitable will or See, through like practice, that's yeah. just another place the adversary is going to come in. It is, right? yeah, because and it, because it's um, because I, I realize this like now that you're saying it, like it's becoming quite obvious. Because like as I'm trying to hold my integrity together through indomitable will, I've actually started to judge myself and become more judgmental of others, and that just creates yeah. another game. That creates yeah, another that's game. A <laughs> that's there. That's intense too. That could oh. be a tough one. Because now your indomitable will is fighting with your indomitable self judgment. That oh boy, that's a, that, that, that's a that's a real struggle. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So here's the next one. And the next one, I okay. think it, it's probably obvious, but I think it's useful to have out there, which is, um, and some of the language, some people refer to as intergenerational trauma Yes. or, or yes. karma, right? yes. which is, you know, the, <laughs> you're not lazy. You're taking responsibility for like 10,000 years of this stuff bouncing around. <sighs> I know. <laughs> years of the, of the devil mostly winning. <laughs> I, I know, but it's, it's like because, because the devil has like so deeply taken over our world, like it, it, there's, no, there's no sympathy for where I'm at. There's no sympathy. Right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, and then, okay, so the other piece I have there is uh, uh, for reasons. I happen to have been studying the sort of the first century, two centuries of Christianity. Mm -hmm. And one of the things you notice if you spend time studying that is like an awful lot of guys, if you read their biography, you know, ends up with and was martyred. Like okay. most. <laughs> okay. And most of them, when they're like martyred, they're not martyred a little bit. You know, it's not like they were, you know, uh, given an opportunity to die peacefully. Okay. So they're bent limb from limb. Like they're crucified it. upside down, like they're yeah. impaled on a spike. You Got know, it. Seriously bad news. I understand. So, yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. Fair enough. There's no sympathy, and you know we haven't got it that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're, we've got some folks who've been through some serious stuff to bring us to a point where we actually have we have something that we have to deal with, and in some sense, our challenge. I, I wrote an essay on this that. It's not great, but I really, I feel like it hits something precise. Okay. What I call, I call the infinitesimal courage. Okay. If there's something actually, um, and I, I don't know, I don't mean this to be, uh, I don't want it all to dilute course, what I call the coarse grain courage. Okay. You know, there's something about the courage of being able to kind of face the lions mm -hmm. and still stay in your authentic self, like to have such yeah. a tremendous yeah. uh, love that uh -huh. you can actually be eaten or killed or, 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 or you know, charge the, the, the beaches at Normandy mm -hmm. and not uh, turn away from yeah. that. And that's a real thing. That's an important thing. Mm -hmm. There's something else that in, in, in many ways is actually precisely because it's so much more subtle that is in many ways even harder to do. Okay. That's, that's to begin to actually trace down the, the, those minute little things that are actually at the most, like one, highly subtle, okay. highly nuanced, and, and the closest to your heart, right? So, for example, if, I, if I'm walking, if I'm in war, mm -hmm. the worst that opponent can do is they can kill my body. Yes. And that's bad. Like, yeah. That's a really bad thing. But my actual beloved... Mm -hmm. They can wound me in a way that is tremendously more actually hurtful. And betrayal yes. by the most beloved yes. tears your heart open in a way that yes. her ordinary coarse range courage cannot avail you. Yeah. You have to have a different kind of courage to enter into that. Yes. And betrayal by your own heart in your own interior, uh -huh. the beloved of yourself, is maybe even more thought. So that's like wow. that's a different practice. Well, not a different practice. It's an extension of that practice into the into like the a different. Hmm. Can't really explain it, but it's, a, but it's something that I think is very much ours to do. Like we have yeah. we have to actually get the whole a full spectrum of courage to be able to navigate to the world we're in. So okay, that's the, the counterpoint to the yeah we're probably not going to get crucified. Although by the way we might be. Yeah. The world is. The world is continuing to unravel in, in dark intensity, mm -hmm. and that may just what's up. And if so, then that will be our responsibility as well. 
Uh, but in the meantime, navigating at the very subtle and nuanced, delicate level is a piece we have to deal with. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like just, just talking to you here, I, um, I feel like the, the, the weight of the responsibility, like the, the, the complete and utter like weight of it and, and the, uh, the, the, the devil's bargain, like, um, cause it, because I'm so, I, I could be so good at playing games. I see it yeah. all. I see it all, but I, I choose not to. I, I'm playing nice. I'm being really nice. And people are yeah. playing games on me. I'm like, I, like, you're manipulating me. I saw a hundred different ways to manipulate you through this entire friendship. I didn't do it because I like you. And then you do this to me. And so it's just, but, and I see the, the, um, uh, the, the flashes of, of like a, the, the flashes of the, 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 the treasures you get from taking the devil's bargain. And it's, uh, I can't say it's not tempting. Oh, yeah. It's, it's tasty. Yeah, it's tasty. There's something there for sure. But I mean, obviously, <laughs> we're the world would not have made that trade over and over again for 10,000 years if it weren't. Um, the devil's good. The devil knows what he's up to. He's effective. And um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in some sense, it's, it's brutal because it's brutal. you can imagine. Let's just pick, well, we can pick two very close relationships mm -hmm. or, or even three, let's pick three close relationships. Yeah. You have a relationship with your parent. Okay. You have a relationship with your child, mm -hmm. a relationship with your spouse. Okay. I mean, that's it. Those are the three closest relationships that you can have, except yeah. with yourself, I would say. Yeah. And with God. Um. <laughs> We'll bring in that last one in a moment. Um, yeah, maybe that's exactly the right way to do it in that order. You ready? Okay, go ahead. You can imagine. It's worthwhile to actually imagine a lifelong effort to play nice. Okay. A lifelong effort to really, really not um, become an agent of the adversary okay. in relationship with your parents. Okay. To watch your own child become corrupted by the adversary uh -huh. and hold as much as you possibly can to try to help them be redeemed. Okay. Come into integrity, but mm -hmm. knowing that that's not something that is in your power, it's in theirs, right? They have to make that choice themselves <sighs> and to yeah. never enter into that. And a, a whole life, right, you will die. And they have not actually stepped back in, right? Watching yeah. that. Yeah. And by the way, with your spouse, right, with your partner, your actual beloved, who you you truly love all the way down, and you see them, uh -huh. you can see them. Yeah. And yet they are choosing to play mean. Right? Yeah. Every day, every day you wake up and every day you, you hold your integrity and you try to be in that place. And again, you grow old and you die and you never see them step through that portal. Right? Wow. All three. Right? That's, a, wow. that's a thing that has happened. Right? Countless times that has happened. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you need to be able to be at that level. Uh, oh my goodness. Like that's brutal. That's brutal. So then we have that fourth, that fourth, which is the the only one where that's not going to happen is in fact God. That the only one that's not going to happen is that that grace mm -hmm. where, which is fundamental. As you said, it is omnipresent. It is actually deeper than human yeah. and more fundamental than human. Okay. <laughs> That one is already offering you unconditional love. Okay. Oh, perfectly. Okay. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. You can't break it. Okay. In fact, it is the infinite qua infinite. It is uh -huh. intrinsically of that nature. Okay. Uh, and so your responsibility is to, to find that redemption. Okay. And that grace. Mm -hmm. Come back into your wholeness. And that's sort of, that's the source. That's the only way. So when you think about those classic martyrs who are able to actually face brutality at the physical level mm -hmm. and quite clearly we face all kinds of challenges and brutality at the relational level i'm sure i don't know a lot of stories about it but i'm sure um that's the only thing that can get you there from my point of view like you're mm -hmm. not going to get there through like meditating every day right? you're not yeah. going to get through yeah. indomitable will or yeah. deep practice 
Um, you have to actually connect with something which is intrinsically love, intrinsically whole, has, has grace and redemption as its fundamental element, like its essence. Yes. You have that you have that relationship. Yes, and and, and you know you know where it is. It's like uh, it, it's you can feel it. You can feel it. Um, you can feel it, and you can. Uh, it's a it's a direct experience. You can experience it, but yes. the, the 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 adversary convinces you it's not real. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. and and it's it's hard to have faith in it. Like mm -hmm. when 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 all you when when you when you when you can see the devil in other people, and you can <laughs> see the games that they're playing, and you can see their betrayal. Yeah. Um, on, on the subtlest of levels, right? Like they, it's like they, it's sneaky. It's like they think they can get away with it. It's like, but, but, uh, and, and so when you see these things, um, because, because it's like, it's like, it's, it's confusing you. It's, t it's getting you to take the physical as more real, as more real than your actual experience of the infinite. Mm. Yeah, the, your actual experience of the infinite, because even, even the adversary is an expression of the infinite. Even the adversary is an expression of, of uh, the, uh, an element of the infinite that is afraid of uh, its, own, um, uh, its own boundlessness, its own boundlessness. And so it, 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 it contracts into like... like um, a, 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 a cluster of condensed sensations, let's say. Um, huh. Are you following me? Totally. It's really interesting. I'm liking it. Yeah, yeah, because uh, it's, it's like, because um, uh, it's, uh, and I'm sure you, you, you've had these experiences as well, enlightenment experiences. Sure. Enlightenment experiences when your uh, sense of self becomes, um, becomes dissolved by the infinite. Uh, and you become one with the infinite. You are the infinite. Uh, because everything is part of the infinite, and the 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 adversary is um, a a a scared and wounded manifestation of um, uh, the infinite that has forgotten itself. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's almost like a um, like a, a re remembering. Um, it's a re remembering of. Uh, I call it original innocence. Original innocence. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice, right? Because it's 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 a it's a it's a remembering of the fact of kind of prior wholeness. Yes. It's not a it's not a task. It's not a problem to be solved. Yes. Which is why this, this aspect of yourself that exists for the purpose of solving problems uh -huh. is the right tool. Yeah. That's, that's a, a big part of the trick is when you try to resolve the, this thing through that tool, that's like a very subtle little trick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey, I'm yes. the right one to solve this problem. Yes. Actually, no. Yes, You're okay. Almost yes. perfectly not. Yes. Because it isn't that, it's not a problem. It's a yes. remembering. It's already there. Yeah, it's already there. Be because if, if it, making it a problem makes it something to be attained and it brings you away from the re-remembering. Mm -hmm. Ah, God, yes. Yeah, that, uh, th this, is, this is great. This is pure gold. <laughs> this is very <laughs> helpful for me. I, I, I feel like I've been stuck for like months on like this exact thing, right? Like these exact topics. I've been stuck, like absolutely stuck. And trying to solve it, right? Like, oh, trying to solve so, it. So, let me put a piece into the, into the larger field. Um, you, you know, but anybody who chooses to watch this doesn't. Mm -hmm. You set that particular uh, epistle a while back. Like, I don't know, maybe more than a month. Yeah. And I, I re immediately responded to you saying, this is good. Mm -hmm. And you said, can we talk? Mm-hmm. And I may have said yes, but I'm not sure when, or I may not even have said anything. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but the the way that I try to, to navigate life mm -hmm. is in that quality. Of, okay, there's a there's like a there's a yes, and there's also a not whole yes. It's not like a fully mm -hmm. right. Mm. Okay. And 
part of the reasons maybe you know it's an example yeah maybe part of the reason why i found myself just devouring theology for the past month uh-huh was that there was something in there that it that needed to be kind of loaded up in me yes to have part of this conversation yes hey well, bless those guys <laughs> and um maybe right that's just a maybe but the point okay. is uh, uh you know whatever it was a couple of days ago i was like let's do this thing uh-huh and and here we are. So I'm just putting that out there. So no, I get it. No, I do. No, I, I, I feel like that too. Like, um, like I, I, I totally believe in uh, synchronicities. I totally believe in it because it's just following the, uh, it, it's, it's like the having faith part. It's like following the energy where it leads. It's like living life in a state of flow. Um, Wu Wei. Wu Wei, living yeah, life in a yeah, state yeah. of flow. Like, because at this point I've seen enough, like I've done enough shadow work and I've seen enough, I've navigated enough of the social game in order to like, like the, the, the understanding is embodied. It's not like I'm trying to analyze people all the time. I just see it. I can yeah. just see things. And so if I can just see it, I can just rest in the fact that I can see it and not have to worry too much, right? Like it's that kind of trust uh, a free fall into the universe, trusting yeah. in the universe. And, um, and sometimes the energy just feels ripe. It just feels ripe. And, and from the, that place of feeling ripe, there is um, a, a, a directed sense of action coming from a state of wholeness that is in tune with uh, the world around you. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, yeah. By, uh, by the way, I noticed it's something that you are just doing. I suspect you do, which I think I also do, which is you were the way you were saying those words, they were, you were finding a location or an orientation and then you were finding a way to be very, very precisely attuned with that. And then you allowed the words to come out while holding that attunement. That's exactly why I resonate with your material. Actually, it, it's it's just it's so um, like your your material is so well articulated. The, the, the parts I can understand because I can't understand all of it, but like the parts uh, where I understand, I'm just like like I totally um, see where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, I can totally see where you're coming so, from. So let me unpack a, a, a concept here or a notion. It's, it's very specifically on the spot around Wu Wei. Mm-hmm. Um, and the spot of trust the universe, because I think there's a, uh, like a disambiguation or a clarification that can often be helpful here. Okay. Because one might object, one might object to the notion of trust the universe around, and I think this is an, like a silly objection. I'm going to be very clear. I think it's a silly objection. Okay. Um, I'm walking down the road and I cross the street in front of traffic because I'm trusting the universe that the car won't hit me. Yeah. 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 Silly objection. That's yeah. not that's not what we're talking yeah, about. For sure. We're not even talking about like uh, you know, I'm going to the airport and I just feel like I can kind of just like kind of sort of magically flow through the airport and end up at my destination. Mm -hmm. you know, sort of, I have to actually be able to read the sign and know where the plane's leaving and like navigate through that space. Mm -hmm. What we're actually talking about is the whole concept of just embodied mastery. Yes. You know, okay. Embodied mastery. You know, when uh -huh. I'm you talk to a musician who's playing guitar. The, the point of mastery of playing an instrument, and by the way, an archer, uh -huh. uh, yes. woodworker, yes. swimmer, embodied mastery uh -huh. is such an embodied level of relationship with the thing that's happening that that's not a problem. It's not your 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 capacity to navigate this 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 challenge or this inquiry, this task uh -huh. is fully now just part of who you are, mm -hmm. but you navigate it you live with it. And what you notice is the subtlety of it, right? A master is, if you ask a master, like, well, why did you do that? And if they choose to attend to it, they'll actually, they'll give you answers. Yeah. The answer's like, holy smoke, uh -huh. like you're actually integrating so many characteristics. Yes. It's not really vastly more potent than analytic methodology yes. ever. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. So, yes. The notion of the way is to say, can you achieve embodied mastery with life itself? Perfect. So that's Perfect. the task. Yeah, perfect. You, you know, it's interesting. Like, um, so like the analogy that I have, um, like, like I've taken up martial arts in the past and like I'm at like, um, like I would say like a high level beginner, like I'm like a high level beginner uh, because if I can break down 
a person's uh, patterns when they're sparring into like a few tendencies, I can beat them. Uh -huh. I can beat them. Yeah. So like, like a guy is coming forward and he's trying to find me with the jab. So I switch to southpaw, I take away his jab with my left hand. And every time he comes forward, I shift in on an angle while blocking his jab and giving him like a one, two from the uh, southpaw position. And then from southpaw, I switch to orthodox and attack him on a 45. And then from doing that, if I can like make, make the fight about that, mm -hmm. I can win the fight. I can yep. just turn the fight into like a very small manageable problem, a trap that they can't get out of. I turn the yep. fight into a trap they can't get, off, get out, of, out of. But the guys that I, I spar with who like consistently beat me are people where I don't know what they're doing. I have no clue what they're doing. I have no clue. I have no idea. And uh, I think they're doing one thing, but then like actually they weren't doing that at all. They were just testing my reactions and I can't like properly conceptualize their patterns into like a finite strategy. Yes. That's yes. right. I can't. And, and that, that's Wu Wei. That's trusting the universe. They're, they're because they're not, because I'm still in my head, right? I'm in my head and they're kind of just like playing. They're just doing a bunch of different things. See like what's happening with me. So there's, there's like, I'm trying to detect patterns. They're not trying to create, like I, I might give somebody a false pattern as a way to like, uh, right. Them. I get it. I understand. Yeah. But they're not even, they're not really giving me a pattern. They're just, doing random stuff, testing reactions. And then when I think I have a pattern that's not actually there, I fall into a counter, right? And then, and then on one level, there, it, it, I was talking to this guy who beat me pretty bad. And I was talking to him afterwards. It's like on one level, he's doing that, right? He's not giving me any patterns. He's not thinking. He's just like, he's, he's just uh, fucking with me pretty much. <laughs> Fuck, I'm just food to him. I'm just food to him. He's, he's fucking with me. And... Um, and, uh, uh, so he, I can't detect any pattern. And then afterwards I ask him how, how he beat me. And it, and it seems like he's not thinking at all, but he is thinking. He's just mm -hmm. not thinking about the discrete exchanges. He's thinking several levels up. He's thinking like, oh, how can I get him to run out of gas? He's mm -hmm. thinking like, oh, when is he breathing in and I can punch him in the body so he falls down and he can't fight anymore. Like he's mm -hmm. thinking, he's not thinking like, like, how do I like land this punch. Like he's thinking like, like, like he's mastered this paradigm, the paradigm that I'm in of like how to land punches, right? right. He's mastered that paradigm and he's like, like he, so, so cognitive capacity does not have to be uh, uh, used <laughs> to like, to pay attention to all the little details of that paradigm and he can think higher level more conceptually. So, so, but, but, but there's like almost like an infinite regress on some, some level. Like you can always like conceptualize higher up until you get to like no mind. And that's like complete mastery. That's like complete yeah. mastery where you're just, yep. where, where it's like, he doesn't even have to think like when I'm breathing heavy to land the body shot, it just, he just throws it and it lands. Yeah, <laughs> well, in, you know, in, the, in, the, in the language of the martial arts, uh -huh. at that point, this is like, you're, you know, when you get all the way up to that top and you're mm -hmm. at the mythological, you're actually at the mythological level. Okay. Right? So these are the stories where you're not fighting him anymore. You are literally fighting either the universe or yourself. Oh. Right? This is where you have the stories of, you know, he's, he's, he's sort of, he has infinite energy, he has infinite strength, he has infinite uh -huh. durability um, because he's actually now an expression of the infinite in front of you. And, you know, and then that's, that's that, like, if you can get to that, that's like, that's, yeah. that's a very, that lineage has those, those stories in a nice way. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's like, it's like the kind of, it's the kind of thing that like, oh yeah, no, it's, it's, it's strange. Yeah. It's, it's strange because I'm almost like, um, <sighs> It, it, it's strange. It's strange because the, 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 the thought that my mind has is, is, is bringing up right now. Right. Um, okay. So I, I, I need to speak carefully here I need to speak carefully here. Huh, interesting. Um, so, so yes, like com yes to complete everything you said and the, the higher level you, you get in a sense, the more you're letting go of, uh, 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 identification, 
the more you're letting go of identification uh, and the more you're letting go of uh, the, the ego to some degree, to some degree. But it appears that there are people who are very high level up, who have this level of mastery, who are acting in a way that would suggest they are possessed by the adversary. And you would think that as they're reaching higher levels, they can actually see more of the infinite. And yet they're still acting in a way that's as if they're possessed by the adversary. What is that? Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna do that together. Okay. See if that out. Okay. So your first yes, in fact, very, very famously, mm-hmm. and very famously, there's a, um, you, you, you level up, we have that language, we use the gaming metaphor, you level up. Mm-hmm. As you level up, you are, each time you come through the process of a level, there is an opening towards the infinite. Right? Okay. Each, each one of those, you're feeling that, you can't help it, but right? you feel the connectivity, you feel a, yeah. a reintegration. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay, here's my first proposition. Uh, my first proposition has to do with, uh, like, I'm, fe- I'm almost seeing like a harpoon. The, you know, the adversary gets you early. Right? Mm-hmm. It's in there before you begin leveling up. Okay. So they get you subtly, like it's sitting in a very, lo- very particular location. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's actually, if you think about it, it's actually quite simple. Um, let's say, uh, let's just do martial arts as the example. Okay. Right? Well, I can go vertically on the ability to sort of engage in, in my physical body, engaging in kinetic conflict, uh-huh. very high, and not even the least bit deal with the fact that my mom rejected me when I was young. Yes. Yeah. And what the adversary does is the adversary fuels this part. Okay. It allows you to avoid dealing with this part oh. by giving you the reward of this part. Right? And that's what happens. And that it almost becomes the fuel. You become extraordinary in this direction by virtue of making yourself almost completely vulnerable here. Okay. And so now what happens is your capacity to sort of navigate life well uh-huh. in this direction is so high okay. that your incapacity down here is an even harder thing to deal with. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's um, you know, like I, I think I, it cut off before I made this point. I think I said it earlier, but um, the the uh, the vision that I have is um, like the three step process, right? Like first, you first comes healing, then comes empowerment, and lastly is community. And healing has to be first because I I, I anticipated what you said actually, um, because uh, I see. I see the, I see what happens when people uh, look for competence before they they healed, like when they mm. look for they look for um, empowerment before they've healed, and and so um, it's it's like the 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 empowerment has to uh, come from a place of wholeness for you to be in right relation with the world around you. Mm, nice. And then I would just add one more thing. It's just, okay. and then comes healing. Yeah. Because as, as you expand the scope of relationality, whole aspects of yourself that maybe weren't in light okay. or were under, under pressure come open, right? So you heal yourself as an individual. And, and by the way, I think this is the case. I'll just propose it. Okay. Uh, a relationship will show up. Mm-hmm. And that relationship is simultaneously like truly only available because you've done the healing and the empowerment that you've done. Okay. Also, that's going to test a whole new set of stuff. Okay. It just can't run on an individual basis. It's Got been it. just impossible to alone. Got it. And then, and then to the degree to which that comes through that, that larger thing has a, has a healing. Now you're opening up to an even larger scope. And I think this is actually the, how we do it. Like how we do this thing is okay. individuals and then coming into relationships and then coming into relationships of relationships and each layer or each stage brings a whole new set of things that, and it's so frustrating because yeah. start again, you know, and, and by the way, you start again and again, you know, when you, when you enter into that relationship, yes. 
yes. your own personal journey gets cracked open. You're going to go yes. through that whole process at an individual level again. And you're like, wait a minute, I was enlightened like two months ago. What yes. just happened? Like, oh, guess what? Um, you get to go all the way. You get to start at zero. Um, and you're starting at zero with a whole new person. Um, and you get back and you get that and the relationship gets really strong and as individuals you're like wow we're really like uh-huh. holding our integrity as a relationship is strong and my personal integrity is strong let's try to do this in a larger community boom <laughs> yeah back to- yeah and uh, it's it's um it's uh it's karmic it's karmic because that's that's why um i keep ending up in the same uh social situations that I have not healed from when I was a child. Mm-hmm. And they, they, uh, they hit on the same triggers and they hit on the same triggers over and over. And like every time it's like I'm getting closer. It's like I'm getting closer every time. Like first it was really bad, then it was better. And now it was like really close, but not quite it. And it's just like, it, it's, it's just, it's the same pattern over and over, but it's like every time you repeat the pattern, you learn more about yourself and everyone involved. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it's pointing to in a good direction. It's a it's pointing in a di- good direction, which is why you need um, humility and grace. You need humility and grace because um, I, I, I I I get it. Like my 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 um, my self judgment and my kind of uh, tendency to uh, tyrannically like hold myself to this like imagined standard. Um, it's uh, it, it actually comes from arrogance. It yeah, comes from my arrogance. Sure. It comes from like, yeah, like, like I, I for sure can do this because like I'm more than human almost. Like it, it's a subtle form of narcissism in a way. It's like, uh, it's not allowing myself to be fully human. Yeah. And, uh, it, it, nice. And as well said. Yeah. And it's, it's not allowing other people to be that way either. And that's causing the judgment of others and creating, you know, again, another, um, subliminal social game yeah yeah and yeah. there's a there's something about oh i mean there's a lot there about um your relationship well, let's say our relationship with what it means to be fully human yeah like it's okay yeah it's okay <laughs> yeah it's okay it's okay to be fully human it's okay you, you know it's interesting like i was thinking about this like uh the other day right and um like growing up i, I dealt with uh I dealt with quite a bit of racism. Yeah, I dealt with quite a bit of racism. Not from white people. Not from white people. I feel obligated to say that, like whenever I'm like, <laughs> talking to white people, actually. <laughs> I feel obligated to say that. White people have been very kind towards me. Like, just very kind, very kind. Um, but I dealt with a, a lot of re- racism. And um, uh, I, I've come to a place where I'm now able to forgive them. And it mm. comes from the realization and, and this is what it is. The reason why I wasn't forgiving them was because I was arrogant. I was very arrogant. I'm morally superior to you. Um, mm. But, but it, 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 the, the, the humility is realizing if I was in their position, I probably would have acted the same. I mm-hmm. probably would have acted the same. I probably would have acted the same, most likely. Or at least... Um, I, I, I probably would have felt bad about it, but the temptation would have been too strong because mm. it's like fitting in with a whole bunch of people if you right. get to do a little bit of racism. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So if, if it's like, it's like in the same way, like, um, I was thinking about this, uh, I was thinking about this, um, and, and this is, this is, this was my entry into really like understanding the adversary and the social game was like this this point that Jordan Peterson always points out. Um, oh, by the way, like I, I come from UFT, so I was actually a student of both Jordan Peterson and John Bravaki. Funny oh, wow. enough. <laughs> funny enough. Um, yeah. Funny enough. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a point that Jordan Peterson made, which is that um, if you were in Nazi Germany, like just you generally, not you specifically, you probably would have been yeah. a Nazi. Because the social incentives are skewed in such a way where you can get validation, prestige, status, connection, um, fitting in from being a Nazi and not being a Nazi can put you at physical risk and get you socially ostracized. So in that moment, most people take the devil's bargain. Like, like this notion of just like a gang. Yeah. 
This ain't a game. That's exactly you know, what it is. Yeah. Somebody who's got trauma. Yeah. And has some leadership capacity. You just need that. <laughs> has trauma and a leadership capacity. Mm-hmm. And they notice that by projecting a certain kind of of dominance on somebody who they can, and it it could be anything, right? It could be mm-hmm. somebody who is slightly smaller. Okay. It could be somebody who is you know of a different ethnicity or race. Yeah. It could be somebody who has a weird lisp, right? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Somebody where they can. It could be they just happen to be big, and it's just a you know, person they they think they can physically beat. Yes. Uh, and then, and what that does is that creates that exactly the game a dynamic, but it creates yeah. a well, you know, the people around them. Some some people are going to look at that and say they're also got a little bit of trauma and a mm-hmm. little bit of you know orientation towards that kind of behavior. Which, by the way, is in, in, we have to remember to fight the lion in behalf on, in defense of your tribe uh-huh. to be willing to engage in physical violence to protect the people you love uh-huh. is a virtue. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. And there are people who are supposed to hold that virtue. Mm-hmm. Not everybody, by the way, just some people. Yeah. All right. Well, that virtue can also be a vice if it's turned. Like if I can if I can cause that the kid over there to look like a to be to be the other that's threatening our tribe, uh-huh. then I'm activating that that instinct. And now what happens is I start to create a dynamic. That's what a gang is, right? A gang yeah. is just an activation of deeply fundamental virtues in pursuit of vice. Okay. And this is what that means. So, by the way, I'm getting a text that I have to I have to get going. Okay. Thing I have, um, but let's pick this up at a later date. Yeah, this was uh, this was excellent. This was amazing. This is exactly what I needed and wanted. Yes. Yes. Thank Very you so nice. much. Thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. I look forward to to getting to know you better. Yeah, I would love that. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye.